Um, so let's jump into storyboard a little bit and do some animating. I figured I would just get started with a simple animation um, using the timeline. Um, and I wanted to show off, demonstrate a context-based animation. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So I want to make an animation for these four buttons. And I want to make it a very simple build that just kind of shows itself and hides itself when the button is clicked. Um, so it just kind of fades in and fades out very, very subtly. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, I'm going to add a fill. So I'm going to add a new render extension, a fill. And I'm going to choose the color using the color picker. And I'm going to choose, I'm going to sample this blue field here to get the nice blue. Great. So now I've got a color chosen. I'm going to set my alpha to zero. And I'm also going to add a variable. So I'm going to bind it to a variable here. So add a variable. I'm going to choose a new variable. I'm going to leave the default name alpha and the default value zero. Say finish and OK. Great. So now we've got a new render extension and a new variable. Pretty easy. But it only exists on one control for now. That's OK. We're just going to focus on a single control for now, and we'll migrate it over to the others. So first things first, let's add a new animation. I'm going to call it Menu Button Pressed. I'm going to leave it at 60 FPS, and I'm just going to say OK. So menu Button Pressed. So the first thing I want to do is I can right click here and I can say add an animation step. And the animation step I want to add is going to change the menu layer climate, which is this button. And I'm going to change the alpha variable that we just added. I'm going to change it from 0 to 40. And I'm going to make my duration 200 milliseconds. So. So now we've changed, we've made our fill visible, but I also want to hide it again. So I'm going to go ahead and double click beside my my first step, and it's going to automatically add another step for us, and it's going to choose the same length. Um, so I can change the end value. I can either change it in the properties up here or within the timeline. I can double click it, and I can choose zero for my end value. So now we're going to go up to 40 and back down to 0. So if I want to simulate this and see what it looks like, I can using our simulator tool. I can see it gives a nice little flash effect. Looks good enough for me. I like it. So one thing to note about this animation is it is changing a very specific variable. So it is changing menu layer climate.alpha. So that is very specifically this variable. Now we don't really want that because if we want to apply this animation on other controls, well, that's not going to work because this is very specifically changing the alpha va uh, variable on the climate control. We don't want that. So in order to make this animation contextual, we can choose to replace our keys here that are um, relative to a very specific control, and we can make them more generic. So if I choose to change the design context here from application, and I choose the climate control, since in this case, all our variables in the animation are relative to climate, I can do that. And then it's going to ask if I'd like to apply the context. I'm going to say yes in this case, because I do want my keys to change according to the selection that I'm making. So I'm going to say yes. And you'll see now that my key switched. So it used to be dollar sign app menu layer climate alpha. And now it's dollar sign control alpha. So this means that we can ha we now have a generic animation that we can apply to any control. And as long as it has an alpha field, we'll be able to animate it. So from here, what I'd like to do is I can preview it again to make sure that I haven't broken anything. Yep, so it still previews OK. But now what we want to do is we want to take our render extension and our alpha, and we can select these in our application model view, and we can say edit, copy. And then what we can do is we can select security, calendar, and settings, which are our other three buttons here. And I'm holding my control key down so that I can multi-select. Then if I right click, I can say edit and paste. So 
Now what I've done here is I've added a fill with a variable onto each one of these controls. So they're progressing along to being able to be um, manipulated by our button, our menu button pressed animation here. If I would like to preview our animation on something other than the climate button, I could do that. So the way I would do that is our design context. Again, we can leverage this button again. So we are currently set to climate and that's why we're previewing on the climate con control. But if I were to move that to calendar, for example, and in this case, it's gonna ask if I wanna apply the context. And we said yes last time. And that's because we wanted to change our keys. This time we specifically don't want to change our keys. So we're gonna say no. We're gonna leave it as a control independent variable. Now when I hit preview, it should preview in the context of the calendar button. So the same animation is now gonna run in a different context. So you see the calendar button now flashes. Good, so that means our animation is uh, well formulated to be able to uh, be used across different controls. So what's left now is to be able to trigger these animations. So to do that, I'm gonna right click on my, on my climate control. I'm gonna say add action. And I'm gonna trigger by a press. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a animation action. And I'm gonna trigger the animation menu button pressed. And in this case, we don't need to change any of these default values. It's okay. Um, we we want to start at the beginning. We don't want to pause it. We don't want to reverse it. And we, it's fine to do a cleanup at the end. So these are all the defaults and they're all the correct values for us right now. So now that I have that animation, I only have it on one control, but I could easily simulate our engine and make sure that that is working as expected. So, there we go, got the animation on one control, but not on the other, so that's good. So now what we can do is I can copy that animation that I have on a single control, and I can move that to the other three. So you might ask yourself, how does it know which context it's running in? Like, how does it apply the correct context to the animation? And in this case, the reason is, since the action that is triggering the animation is on a control, that control automatically becomes the context that that animation is using. So that's why when I click the settings, when I click the calendar, they're being used as the context for the animation. Um, now, if we were triggering them from an action, you know, at a higher hierarchy level, we would need to, um, we would need to invoke the animation, we'd need to trigger it from Lua, where we could, that's that's the place where we would provide that extra context if we weren't triggering the animation directly from um, the context we want to use, like we are in this case. Now that we can trigger it, there's one thing to note, um, is that that same animation is actually running in a exclusive manner. So that animation, since every time it runs right now, it has the same ID. So by default, an animation is triggered with an ID that matches the name of the animation. So right now, the ID of the animation, every time I trigger it, doesn't matter what button I trigger it on, is called menu button pressed. So what this means is while menu button pressed, the animation with that ID is running, only one can ever run at a time. So if I click two buttons in quick succession, you'll see that it will pause the, it'll stop the animation and trigger the new one. So this is how, how come here, when I press really quickly, um, it leaves these animations halfway in between. So that's that's on purpose. So that's, that's uh, the desired behavior there. So what we can do to get around that, if we wanna run these animations, um, the same animation at the same time, um, what we can do is, we can trigger them with a specific ID. So if we look at our actions here, our ID was left blank. So as I said, it uses the default menu button pressed as the ID. But what we could do is we could give it unique IDs. So as long as we don't ever have another animation named climate, um, that could be a unique ID or what other thing we could do to make sure for, that it will be even more unique is we could give it the fully qualified name to the control menu layer climate. Um, in our case, since we 
have pretty tight control over this, we can get away with just giving it the unique name climate. So that's for that one. For this one, we can give a unique name security. And so on and so forth. And this will allow us to do the same same thing with um, while enabling the animation to have multiple instances running at the same at the same time since they have unique IDs. So there we go. Now all four of those animations are going to be triggered uniquely. So that means we can now have them running at the same time without exchanging one running animation for another running animation. Um, so that's a really important thing to know if you want to use context-based animations. It means usually you trigger the animation with um, the name of the control you're triggering it on or the context, um, usually like the fully qualified name for the context. Um, yeah, it's a very important trick for being able to, to perform um, that task. Thank you.